video games, books, television. They are the five families of media. Well, we are the family that talks about it. This is Multimedia Mafia. Good morning, good evening, good whatever time it is where you are out there in podcast world. You're now listening to Multimedia Mafia, and I am the Don at the desk. I'm Anthony. And with me tonight, my goon squad, in the booth with me, I have Amanda, the beak, the bitch. What's happening, sis? Same shit, different day. I hear that. I hear that. And I got the bun, Mr. Isaiah. What's going up, Izzy? You're... You know, man, I got to, I got to, you know, you, you ask a white person, hey, how's it going? They're like living the dream. Same thing. That just meant, that's just white person for, I just want to die and I hate myself. Did she say that? No, she's like, same shit, different day. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely white. It sounds about white, right? Living the dream. <laughs> hey, <yo. laughs> All righty then. Well, tonight is our season finale of our season of movies, and we want to, f- um, we want to finalize this season with an episode dedicated to the movies that actually blew our minds. The movies that screwed with you, that you have to watch over and over again to figure out what the hell's going on. We're talking about the mind fucks out there. Movies that you just don't get on the first viewing. And then you watch it again and you're picking up all those details and you go, holy shit. Or one of those movies where you think you know what's happening up until the very end and the twist comes like a it's like a finger in your butt at an orgy it's like oh hey now i was surprising hey yo, you oh, had an orgy okay. though, so you should expect it exactly see i do agree with isaiah if you're at an orgy and someone slips a finger up there you're like you know hey man you can't watch everybody you had an orgy you. expect to get fucked exactly but oh. when i'm watching a movie i don't expect to get fucked that's right well sometimes you do no, <laughs> no. well your mind does I watch a lot of movies that involve fucking, but not a lot with my mind. Oh my god! <laughs> but that's not, that's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. Let's backtrack. Movies that you watch, and all of a sudden you go, "Wait a minute! Hey, wait a minute! What the Big hell was that booty about?" Latina bitches three. Oh my lord, Jesus! You already know. <laughs> Value three going in a different direction. <laughs> you know, Joshua had a great idea for a porno once. It was New York back alley dumpster sluts nine. And dumpster asked, sluts nine. <laughs> I asked him why nine, and he goes, "Because you don't need to see one through eight. Right. <laughs> if they made a nine, it must be good. <laughs> well, we're not talking about New York Alley b- dumpster slops uh, nine. We're talking about mindfuck movies. Oh, my God. And Isaiah, I want you to tell me what is one of the mo- mindfuck movies that you brought to the table. You tonight. know what? I haven't watched a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. But I did a play in high school. Senior year. Uh huh. We did split. split. And I played the most smallest part in the movie you know at the very begin where he's like picking up his daughters or some shit the husband i have no idea what movie you're what's what, split? what is split you're talking about the movie with with james mcavoy yeah okay, okay. Where he has a split personality yes okay right. i did see that movie the, th- the third one glass i haven't seen yet but okay yeah, yes no. split, split. Yes. where he has the multiple personalities and like at the yes. end uh, you know boom so I played the smallest role in that movie, which was when the it was like the father. He was where they get abducted in the car. The chick she yeah, gets yeah, abducted yeah. by the guy with the multiple uh, multiple personalities. Yes, his the father was putting luggage in the trunk. Mm-hmm. No one knows where he went. Well, the dude knocked him out. The guy with the multiple personality he knocked him out. But nobody knows where he went. He didn't appear again in the movie. Right. So the guy just went off the face of the earth. So I played that role. So the, you guys did a high school production of that say, movie? How did they make a, yeah. news, a, a production out of that? Well, we had, there was a project at the end of the year and everybody had to pick a, oh. a film to put, bring to the stage, you know? Oh. So ours was split. Different. And we had a, um, you know, one of my... One of my friends played the guy with the most multiple personalities. Somebody played the daughter shit. I was the pops. So my only role was to walk from the front of the auditorium through the aisle with the daughter, go to the imaginary car, (laughs) open the trunk, put the imaginary luggage in the trunk. The guy takes me 
and I go off stage, and then that's it. I love how you kept going imaginary with finger quotes in the air. Yeah, because <laughs> everything was we imaginary. Didn't, yeah, we didn't. I didn't have props. I didn't have anything like that. I wore like a sweater so did vest. You like or some walk shit. around like this. Yeah, so I'm hand? just talking shit with the dog. I even forgot. I don't know what the fuck like my a lines jerk were. In the air? It was like two lines I had. Like, how huh, was your day? You know, how was lunch? And then boom, we go on stage. Is this on video anywhere? And then I'm doing th- no. Oh, and then I'm doing it. this. Actually, they cut our our show. They early. cut you out of the video. Yeah, because I had a second part, and I was gonna play like the security guard. And I find the bitch at the end, like, all beat up and everything. I find her at the end and rescue her. So that was going to be, like, my second role. But they cut me off because the guy who was playing the multiple personalities, he had to, between every break, he had to switch costumes. Yeah. So we're shutting the curtains. I'm shutting. Well, I was working the curtains because I had nothing else to do. Oh, my God. I'm shutting the curtains. And he's running across the stage trying to get, like, costumes on and shit. And then we just took too long, so they cut our show. So they was like, yeah, tell them after this scene, that's it. But that's I played... Uh, yeah. What high school was this? It, it wasn't a good one. <laughs> Let me guess, uh, Newark Education System? Excess County Education System. It, well, there you go. Yeah, pretty much. It was pretty shit, but fun fact, my high school is closed down. I was the last class to graduate from there. Oh, look at that. You just made you just beat the buzzer. <laughs> yeah. You shut down the school based They shut down our school for roaches. Seriously? No, nah, I'm just playing. I was gonna say, jokes aside. <laughs> nah, um, there was a school shooting. So okay. Stop playing. Stop nah, playing. That ain't even playing. fun. That's not even <laughs> funny, man. This one's laughing. So, so, uh, so in our movie episode of Mindfuck Movies, you portrayed the father in, in a stage adaptation of the Mindfuck movie Split by M. Night Shyamalan. Right, right, right. Right. Gotcha. I've never seen this movie. When You've did never it come seen out? Split? It was actually a pretty big ting. Yes, it is. That's why we end up doing the the show. Split so came out. Wants to do like Disney movies. You guys chose. Well, Split. which Disney movie is fucking your mind? No, I'm talking about high school. Like In you high guys school, choosing different movies to do. I don't. I don't know. There was some type of requirements or something. Like I had to meet some type of standards, and Split was like perfect. So we're doing that, and yeah, I mean, the role I had was pretty short, but supposedly I watched the movie like a whole bunch of fucking times in preparation. Did you enjoy the movie? Uh, not after like the fourth time, no. <laughs> but it was is was split wait free. no never mind. I was only watching it for mm. my part, so I was watching like the first <laughs> ten minutes of the movie. So you never actually finished the film. <laughs> I watched I'm done. some parts, clips. <laughs> he just watched what he needed to do for the I play. watched it the whole thing once. Split came out in 2016, Amanda. It stars M. It's, uh, it's directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Directed, uh, he directed it. Stars James McAvoy, Anya Taylor Joy, and Betty Buckley. And the man has 24 multiple personalities, and he kidnaps and imprisons. It's a movie years. about me. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> he has like. Anya Taylor Joy is that chick whose eyes are in two different zip codes. She was in the Queen's hey, Gambit. Yo. She looks like a chameleon. I mean, I'm not saying she's a bad actress, but she has like her eyes that are on like right next to her ears, one on each side. Her face is just spread out. Oh, it's spread out all right in two different counties. Oh my god! But he right. is one. <laughs> I could see obviously him playing in this. Looking at pictures of him, he's not all there behind the eyes. Uh, James McAvoy. Yeah. No, he's not. He's not all there behind the eyes. And what what made this movie so good, other than the performance, because you have twenty four performances, twenty four personalities, so that means twenty four different performances by one guy, which is yeah, incredible. exactly. Which was the whole thing because it was like a big deal mm-hmm. because this guy was throughout the whole movie he's playing these different, basically different roles right. because they they don't even match up with each other. So. There was one personality he played was Dennis. The other one was Hedgewig, yes. Jade Orwell, and the one he 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 was kind of superhuman at the, the end. Beast, right? he, he played the Beast, but he was able to climb walls. Yeah, and he was able to like jump over fences. It got it got weird at the end. Like yeah. I can understand people now. It's so not- it turned into a disability to. Yeah, superhuman shit. So superhuman like, shit, which kind of like, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, that we, ain't right. We called it 
multiple personality disorder for a long time. Now it's classified as a, as dissociative identity disorder, which is a real thing. Like there are yep. there are different IDs in, in occupy occupying one person, and they go in and out. You know who takes over and who runs the body, and the rest are kind of like subdued in the back. See, if I was in that movie, I mean, they get kidnapped. I would make friends with all twenty four personalities. No, that's the thing; they they don't they know of each other, and it's not like they're friends. They're just mm-hmm. aware of each other. But one of them has superhuman. I make friends with one of them to try and get. Me if to- Amanda was in that movie, she'd win an Oscar. I, I- I would try and make friends with one of them, so at least some, you know, I I can make friends with that one person. I can get out. Oh he yeah, even we played tried. A, a female, yes. Miss Patricia. Oh yes. my lord! Yeah, and so like, that, that's how he looks. Right I mean, there. There, there's a guy on. There's yeah. a couple, a guy. There's a couple on TikTok, um, and he suffers from um, DID, and he posts videos educating people about what it's like to live with it's this. It's not. Thing. It's not. It's it's some real shit. It's scary oh, absolutely. Shit. Yeah, and, and and they do like blind test with all the personalities and it's very it's yeah. eerie I, I hate to say it like that I but mean, it is eerie like when they switch because yeah. his eyes do shift yeah. and his whole face shifts and it's like the same person but it looks like he's now pissed off but it's not pissed off it's now just a different personality yeah. is, is I operating mean, I, the body. there's a movie that explains that that uh, that personality disorder that i just find hysterical me myself and irene Yes, yes, and that's not. A but I mean, it's fun. not something to laugh at. It is real health. No, the, issues. Right, the real, the real thing is, a, is absolutely a. It's a real thing. The DID is yeah. real, but like, yeah, me, myself, and Irene made fun of it, and this movie, it's not making fun. It's a thriller, you know. But the but here's here's why it's a mind. Oh, I mean, it's crazy. You have to battle twenty four people to try to stay alive. Well, n- it doesn't work that way. But okay. Well, yeah. Well, no, each one just takes over at the, at one at a time. Yeah. No, I think I'm not most, saying like battle 24 personalities. I think the most scariest one for me is when he played, um, is when he he did the kid. Yeah. Where he's a grown ass man, but he's portraying like a 10 year old kid. It's yes. like me start acting like Caden now. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 So it's like really bad. Like, no, not really bad, but just like it's, he it's, portrays it so good that it makes you feel awkward. Yeah, and here's why this movie like popped, right? This was a great performance from James McAvoy. Like the man should have won an Oscar for this. No, yeah, it was a but really great. Performance. What made what gave this movie an extra little boost was there was an uncredited cameo by Bruce Willis at the end of the film, where he was portraying um, a character from an earlier movie by M Night Shyamalan, the movie Unbreakable, mm-hmm. which is about. Bruce Willis survives like a, I think it was a train crash, but he's completely unscathed. Like everyone else died, he walked away fine. And then he finds that he can't be killed, and he has like superhuman ability, and 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 he has superhuman strength. And pe- and he starts like being like a vigilante, and he meets the this man played by Samuel Jackson, who has bones that shatter instantly. So he's very very fragile. What the fuck? Yeah, and his name is Mister Glass. And and it turns out that there are super people in the world and that Mr. Glass has been setting up disasters around the planet to find people who are superheroes or superhumans. But doesn't he live like a depressing life if his bones are constantly breaking? Yes, but that's what drives him because he goes, if I am always breaking, that means there's someone out there who could survive anything. And I want to meet that motherfucker. <laughs> I want to find out why. So <laughs> but what this movie does is. What this movie does is it adds to this weird little superhero thing that M. Night was setting up, and ultimately it, it comes into a third movie called Glass, which I have not seen yet, yeah, but either. that's where James McAvoy's character from Split and and Bruce Willis's character from Unbreakable meet with Samuel Jackson's Mr. Glass, and I heard it was really well done. So I got to still see that film. It's like a very loose kind of superhero e thing. Yeah, I don't I haven't checked that out. I definitely, I it's one of those movies like I gotta, I gotta check that out. I really do, um, because I, I, I thought Unbreakable was great, and I thought Split was fantastic. So I really do have high hopes. And mind you, I am a couple years late mm-hmm. because Glass came out in 2019, so I'm two years past it. But I definitely want to, I want to see. You know, I'm looking at the poster now of Glass. Samuel Jackson kind of looks like. Um, Kind of looks like uh, David D- David Diggs from Hamilton playing Thomas Jefferson. He's got like a purple suit on. His hair's up. He looks like a like a black founding father. He could be. Um, 
Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it looks like a good film. I want to check it out. Uh, and I think anyone out there who oh, likes I, these I movies, see. check He looks out. like a black Willy Wonka. Oh, no. And a cripple Willy Wonka, to be He looks exact. like Frederick Douglass. Yeah, he... Uh, <laughs> wait, so his... Once he breaks his bones, it doesn't look like they heal because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, it's, it's it takes a long time for him to heal. Very long time. Oh, so if he takes like a fall down the steps, he's pretty much fucked. Well, he's fallen down the steps many times. Like he's out. Sometimes I'll walk and my leg just shatters. Like, yeah, sometimes like he's been. In the, so he in, doesn't like super heal. No, he doesn't. That's that's fucked. I would kill myself. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes <laughs> like, yo, we do not support suicide on this show, sir. Yo, you pick up a drill and then that shit has like massive torque behind it and your whole shoulder just pops out of place. And it's just <laughs> like, you can't get shit done. Like, you can't get shit done. Oh, no. <laughs> you can you imagine drilling so you're holding it? And then it bites into something. You're like, oh, shit. There goes my torso. Matt, he's in the shower. He steps on the drain. He starts to twist. His leg twists. He gets sucked down the drain. <laughs> Yo. Oh my God. I would, I would oh, not no. like my life. No, like, that's a terrible life to live. That would have been so. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Thank you, Isaiah. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We can come back. We're going to hear what Amanda has to say about her favorite Mindfuck movies or a Mindfuck movie she brought to the table. Stay tuned. Hello, hola, konnichiwa. I have a very important question for you. Is this real? That's the motto of our weekly podcast. We question everything from the paranormal to conspiracies, even the extraterrestrials. There's no topic we won't dive into. So tune in and listen to our show every Sunday at 8 p.m. And remember, folks, question everything. And we are back. This is Multimedia Mafia. I am the Don at the desk, Anthony, and you're listening to our Mindfuck Movies episode. We just had a small discussion from Isaiah discussing all about the movie Split and the M. Night Shyamalan movies um, Glass and Unbreakable. So good stuff there, Izzy. Mindfuck, mm -hmm. Mindfuck. Mind and M. Night does a lot of Mindfuck movies. He did The Sixth Sense. He did Signs, The yeah. Village. The happening. I think he's into that type of thing. He, might he have is. A, he might have a kink. What a twist. What now? You never saw that from Robot Chicken? Robot like, Chicken? Yeah. What did he say? There would be like a segment and it had a twist in the ending and all of a sudden M. Night Shyamalan appeared on screen and went, what a twist. Oh, no. <laughs> Amanda Nicole. Ah. Uh. You like mindfuck movies. You are a mindfuck movie. <laughs> Basically. What mindfuck movie is your, what are you bringing to the table tonight? Uh, the Jordan Peele movie Us. Okay, let's talk about it because I have not actually seen this movie, and I it, but I want to. Thing is, Jordan Peele scares the shit out of me. Well, what? I like Key and Peele a lot. Um, Key and Peele is funny as fuck. Well. Absolutely, he that's is why he's hysterical scares me. to me. Any um, comedian who could go that far into the darkness scares the living shit out of me. Well, that's why I was just like Robin I, Williams did it. Jim Carrey's done it. Big eyes. That guy. Who Jordan Peele? Yeah. Okay. Like when he takes off his glasses and he just goes like that. And he is bald. <laughs> He's yeah, he, bald as fuck. He is bald. But he... <laughs> whatever. So the, the movie was crazy to me. Um, it stars... Uh, what's I can't say her last name, but it's Lup Lupita Nyong'o. Lupita Nyong'o. Lup yeah. Lupita Nyong'o. We're all fucking her name up just like John Travolta did. Oh, my God. I'm, I, my apologies to you if you're out there listening, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but Lupita so movie, Nyong'o. The movie was crazy because the ba basic, uh, pl you know, the background to it is, you know, her and her family get menaced and tortured by doppelgangers of themselves. E. And they have to live through, you know, all of that. Um, they wind up killing off some of the doppelgangers. Uh, but at the end of the movie, the mindfuck of it all is she met her her doppelganger when she was a child. And she actually was... On the boardwalk in Santa Santa Monica, and she went into one of those fun houses or those mazes or whatever. And how I remember of the movie is that she was kidnapped by her doppelganger and chained underground, and then the doppelganger went out to live her life. Oh my god! And Eesh. at the end of the movie, 
she has somehow made it out. But at the end of the movie, she moves on with her life and the doppelgangers obviously meet up with them when they're on vacation, torture them, menace them through through a series of events. And then at the end, when they pretty much killed all of them off, the family's going away in an ambulance and Lupita sits there and remembers they call herself Red. Um, and she remembers she's Red when she Red and her are the same person. Mm-hmm. So it just it's a, a series of like you at the end of it you're like holy fucking shit like that she's herself like her doppelganger and her are like the same person are basically the same person so it's well, it was a good film. So what happened to the original? You said that she she locked her up. So the original went out to live as her, went to her family to go live as her. And she's a doppelganger now. And she's a doppelganger. Mm-hmm. No, but you said. The doppelganger met her when she was young and right. then chained her up and then lived her life? We lived her life, but then I don't remember the full story, but then somehow Lewis, wait, no. So the doppelganger met her in her childhood. Her childhood. Right. I'm so confused. Exactly. Locked her up. <laughs> uh huh. And then lived her life? I don't think maybe lived her life or didn't live her life, but lived. Out in the world, and mm-hmm. then Lupita grew up with her family. They all met each other, and um, in a family vacation, and the doppelgangers. They, you know, Lupita and Red. I'm just gonna call the okay. the people the doppelganger Red. Right. Red was there torturing the family with the e. rest of the doppelgangers because all of them all looked ev- like every single one of Lupita's family. Okay. So throughout the whole thing, they murdered off the people or whatever, the doppelgangers, the tethers as they call them. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, they got away. Obviously, they lived. Um, I think they killed off Red. And Lupita remembers that she was chained up by Red in a past life. Oh, yeah. So she unlocked like a memory. Yeah, she, she unlocked didn't know like she a memory had. that she. Yeah. Exactly. But why are there doppelgangers? Let me ask you that. Like, does it? There's doppelgangers in real life. No, I know, but okay. I would probably hate myself if I met myself. <laughs> like, yo, well, you were a- just annoying, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I punch myself in the face Yo. a couple dozen times. <laughs> I'd fuck myself. Um, you have though. There is a picture out there of that. There is a picture. Yes, I have to find it. Yes. If you would like it, please get in contact with me. <laughs> I will show you. I have to do a. I have to do an anniversary special edition remake. There is an actual photo of Anthony bent over. I have it. Pleasuring him. You do? I have it, and I am selling copies of it. Or you have the one of Joey. And Ten dollars a peak, fifty dollars a download. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, can we put that? Up? Oh, Josh is not on the mic, but can we put that on the store? No, no. I mean, it might me. drive traffic. A PDF. <laughs> <laughs> For five dollars, get the PDF. High res JPEG. <laughs> no, it was it was a you know for. Jordan and Key Peel. I mean, Jordan Peel. Well, be, just him. It was just, just him. Jordan. It was just him. He's, you know, comedy and fun all the time. And that movie just is like, wait, what the fuck just happened? Right. Well, and a I lot mean, of blood and shit like that in the movie. I did not expect that from him. I got to watch it because when I saw this, it's the legit trailer scared. It's kind of like me. Get Out. Well, they did the, you know, the song, I got five on it. Yeah. Right. They did like a horror version of that song. Really? And that's like, that's what plays at the credits, I think. Ooh. And that was Jordan's idea to take that song and, you know, like, um, you know, screw with it and shit. Mm-hmm. So he chopped and screwed it and he made it like a, like that riff that's in there. He made it like extended, a dun, 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 dun. I got five on it. Like he echoed it and stretched it out. And it sounds so fucking horrifying. Like a song you will get high to, but then a song that will creep you the fuck out. Yeah. Like ever, so far, right? Jordan Peele's filmography. Like he did get out in 2017. And that blew everyone's fucking mind. That movie was scary to me. Like prior to that, he was the writer and producer of the movie Keanu, which is a movie where Jordan P- Key and Peele play like they protect a cat. Or something named Keanu. Yeah. It was a dopey comedy. Yeah, yeah. But then at, right after that, he comes out with Get Out, which was like... He did Get Out? Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he did Get Out. Oh. And the movie was fantastic. And the whole premise was white people just want to be black people. Yeah. Because and- they're cool. No. They're cool beans, dude. It's just... It's just it, was, it was just a cool very beans, weird movie. Dude. 
Yeah, and they can hypnotize people, and they can take over, and they can live forever th- through another person's body. But since black people are on the rise, hey, yo, yeah, that's what they did. Uh, and but but the way it's done, like it's if you pitch it on paper, it sounds like a goofy fucking premise. Yeah, but the way it's shot and directed and 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 just executed, it is a brilliant. It's it's brilliant, 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 and it made a fuck ton of money, mm-hmm. and. Everyone loved it. It, it. it got fucking four nominations at the Academy Awards. Right. And he won the Oscar for it. Um, I believe he won the Oscar for that. I could be wrong, but he won the, you know, he won an Oscar. Um, y- yeah, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and that was his like directorial debut was Get Out. But then he turns around and he does Us. So they had a lot of rabbits in the film. In us? In us. Okay. And you know how I feel about rabbits, right? No, Amanda, please tell me how, how you, do feel you feel about, about rabbits? rabbits. I love bunny rabbits. Okay. Um, okay. so rabbits are one of the as you know, I'm reading a little excerpt here, it's one of the many recurring symbols during the film. Mm-hmm. Uh the daughter of Lupita wears a, a rabbit on the shirt. She also um has another sweatshirt with the word tho on it, which is a Viet- Vietnamese word for rabbit. There's a stuffed rabbit in the family cabin. So um, yeah. basically the meaning behind it is that a rabbit symbolizes rebirth. So the tethereds, which are the doppelgangers, are supposed to be like the rebirths of that family. Oh. And um, they murder the rabbits. They actually feed the tethered rabbits in the film. And well, I, rabbit is delicious. I've never had it, and you just Kinda ruined like my night. Skynet from from Terminator. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad now. That could totally be a mind fuck of a film. Well, Terminator. Yeah. Yo, yeah, yeah. Because if, if John about it, if John Connor doesn't send his father back to fuck his mother, then John's never born. Rabbits are used as test. Or subjects. you could just wait. Wasn't the whole thing was to yeah rescue John Connor? Right. Right, but John Connor sends Kyle Reese back, who fucks Linda Hamilton's character. Forget her name, who's John's father. No, you gotta have to start from the beginning. Okay, it's it's a paradox, right? right. It doesn't make it's not designed to make sense. But Kyle Reese is a fighter in the future. He's fighting, and his commanding yeah, he's officer, fighting. his commanding officer, wasn't they losing or some shit? No, they weren't losing, but they were on the verge. They were like there was a new technology. The Terminator was sent back to kill Linda Hamilton, um, um, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor, right? So they use the same technology to send a soldier back to protect Sarah Connor, which is Kyle Reese. But the commanding officer, Kyle's commanding officer, who makes that decision is Sarah's son, John. And when Kyle goes back to protect Sarah, he fucks Sarah and they conceive John together. So Kyle Reese is John's father. And it's cyc- cyclical. If Cic- what was that cyclical. word? Cyclical. Cyclical? Yes. Yeah, I didn't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's that Essex County education right there. My boy says cyclical. All right. It's it, if, if John doesn't go to the past to fuck Sarah, then... I'm sorry, if Kyle doesn't go to the past to fuck Sarah, John's never born. Right. But if John's never born, he can't send Kyle in the past to fuck Sarah. But didn't Skynet send somebody? Sar- Skynet sent the Terminator. They don't care about all this incestual, pro- quasi-incestual Whoa, 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 whoa. Arnold Schwarzenegger played who? The Terminator. Wait yeah, but he was, he was protecting... In the second movie, I'm talking about the OG, 1984. Wasn't it? Oh. Wait, did you just... Wait, hold on a minute. Wasn't that movie they alluded to, like, saying that it was about incest? No, it's not about incest. No. Oh, and then I'm confused. If, okay, movies. here's the thing. So the Terminator originally was supposed to kill um, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. Right. But then he ended up turning good. There was another the sequel he said that they the hijacked mother. another Terminator. They sent that one back to protect John Connor and his mother. Uh, so that's what it is. But it's a thing right. like, you know, if I met a 10 year old boy, that's a, that's a suspect statement right hey. there. Please don't say that out loud. If I met a 10 year old boy and then. I send him in the past, and he grows up there, and he fucks a woman, and that woman turns out to be my mother. That's my father, but I met him as a 10-year-old child before I sent him in the past. That's the whole thing. Well, I mean, really? older than 10, but still. Would you believe it, though? I think he had to believe it, because if he didn't, then he wouldn't have sent Kyle in the past. He could have sent any soldier, and that would have fucked up the paradox, and time would have re- hit, rewritten itself. He right. had to believe that Kyle was his father, and then he sent him in the past so he could fuck his mother. Like, listen, you have a very That's specific crazy. mission. So did Make they have me. that scene? 
Yes, to have that scene. The porn scene? Yes. Hey, yo. Uh, do doom, doom, do doom. Send me the link. <laughs> have you seen Terminator at all? I seen I seen the one where, you know, the Terminator is protecting John and That's the problem. All of them are except for the original one. Which is exactly. the one where the guy's so, walking out of the fire. That's the second one, Terminator Two Judgment Day. The last the last good Terminator. Everything the, the else. The guy like, with the eye? Yes, he was shot in the face. Yes. Everything else after Terminator 2 is dog shit. Terminator 3, Terminator Genesis, Terminator uh, Rise of the Machines, all that. The last one was pretty good. It wasn't. I liked it. Compared to the OG, it's not no, no, no candle. No, but I, I liked it. I enjoyed okay. it. Yeah, I forgot what that one was called. And then they did the reboot with Amelia Clark. Was it wasn't just and, called Terminator? <laughs> no, it was Terminator Dark Fate. Dark Fate? Yeah, and that's the true third one because Linda Hamilton, Linda Hamilton comes back as Sarah Connor. I liked it because Terminator had more personality. I liked it because they killed him. He had like a job, like a cabin yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like he was like, yeah, I wash clothes or some shit. Was it? Yeah, he's like, I'm programmed to protect, but right now all I can do is change diapers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not like that. All I know is in the first five minutes of that film, they killed a 10-year-old child with a shotgun. And I was like, all yeah, right, I I'm, remember on, that. I'm on board for this. Oh, my God. I'm over, like, I remember that, like, that was fucked up, and that's sad. No. And, and there was some good CGI, no. though, Jesus too. Christ. He stole the biker's clothes and then took his ride, and then he took the bartender's shotgun and sunglasses. Right? Yeah. I think you and I are talking about two different films. The last movie that came out was called Dark Fate. No, no, no. I'm talking about the original one. Oh, yeah, the original yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, But yeah, that's where he say. originally got the gun, yes. the glasses, and the bike. No, in the original Terminator, when Arnold gets there, he's naked. He's He appears in Hollywood, remember, Los Angeles. Yes. He walks up to three punks. One of them is played by Bill Paxton. And he kills one of them, right? He puts his hand through his chest, ah, and he goes, your clothes, eee. your clothes, give them to me. Now. Must, uh, it, it probably was like a second or third. And then he goes, he goes to a gun shop, and he's loading the shotgun, and the guy's like, you can't do that. He goes, wrong, and then blows him away. Oh, so that's shit. That's the very first Terminator. The second Terminator is the one where he lands... Um, I forget, I forget where. I know the third Terminator, he takes place in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. And that then, probably is the one. He, but yeah. he was still young in that one. Yeah, that was 2003. Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger was young in Terminator there was a, Yeah, that was the Terminatrix. That was the Lady X Terminator. She was a female. That was the one hunting John Connor in the end. The world explodes, and it was just a steaming pile of so shit. So who was the one that was coming after him in the original one? The original movie was Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, the second one, I'm sorry. So Terminator 2? Yeah. That was the T-1000 played by Robert Patrick. And he was like the the um, Mercury guy? Yes. Like the, with yeah. the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he could turn his hands into knives and shit. I thought that shit. was the original one. No, no, no. There's one before it. Go watch it. It'll, it's, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah? It's excellent. Yeah, I just, I thought the second one was always the, the original. First, yeah, no. Because that one has Eddie Furlong as John Connor, the little boy. Yeah, because I remember because at the end they kill him with molten, liquid, mo yeah, molten lava. Wasn't it wasn't a liquid nitrogen? Yeah, liquid nitrogen. Yeah, they freeze his ass. They freeze and him, blow him up what, and blow him up. Right? Which one was the one at the end of it where Sarah Connor almost falls into the pit of of Terminator Two Judgment Day? I, I love Judgment Day was the best one out Ju of all of them. D Judgment Day was a fantastic one, but then they did Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines, mm -hmm. which was a pile of dog shit. And then they did Terminator F Genesis, which takes place in the future. That also was a pile of shit. That had Christian Bale in it. And then they did another one. There in was between. like another one with like an army of Skynet, like a whole bunch of duplicates of like Terminator. Yeah, that that was. I mean, they 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 do that a little bit for every Terminator movie. Like that shit was scary. Because you imagine Terminator, and Terminator's like. Yeah, that's what I liked about the last one because because they still kept like he's you know just like an outdated Terminator. Yes. Yeah, he's always outdated. Everything past Terminator Two, he's like I'm an outdated model, but they refurbished me. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah. me on sale at Best Buy and the <laughs> open box program. Oh my yeah. god! All right, so I did fuck up. So Terminator Salvation was the one set in the future. That's the fourth one that has Christian Bale in it. Are these mindfuck movies? No, they, it's fucking my it's mind. It's time right now. paradox movies. Yeah, I need a Tylenol. And then you had Terminator Genesis. And that's the one with Amelia Clark. And that's basically telling the same story as the very first one, just in a different like time period. And then you had the 2019 one called Dark Fate. Yeah. And that is like the 
official third one direct tie into Terminator 2 Judgment yeah. Day. I think uh, that one was so dope to me because it shows the Terminator like in his point of view, like in his eyes, mm -hmm. and he still uses he's like the old school HUD with the outdated yes. targeting program, and then it shows like the point of view of the new updated ones that he got like all this infrared shit the rev nine yeah yeah so it's like gabriel luna played the rev nine terminator yeah and he can have his uh, he has the liquid skeleton and he has the metal skeleton or need so he's a combination of like the t-1000 the t-800 mm -hmm. and also th that's the movie where like five minutes in the movie the Terminator walks up and shoots John in the chest while they're in like Mexico. Like ten year old boy is like, I'll go get a drink, mommy. Do you want a coke? Yeah, okay. And then he's like, Here's a shotgun. Bang. I'm like, yeah, Oh my god, take I like that this. Shot, nigga. Hold that. He's like Ugh. Overall, it's not a the best thing ever. Okay, it was a box office bomb, but it was better than fucking Terminator Salvation. Certainly better than Genesis. So But it was that. a mind fuckery if you didn't know what the fuck was going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. So we have six Terminator movies out there, two of which the first two are the only ones that are good. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely just just know that. If it starts with a man appearing butt naked in the middle of the street talking funny, it's a mind fuck. I've seen several homeless people who do that. So oh. you know life is a mind it's fuck. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. But as handsome as Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day, that guy was a stud. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break on that segment. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a vinyl LP or a cassette tape? 45 RPM? If so, you've come to the right place. Golden Space. We have thousands of titles in stock and ready to ship. Call us at 862-336-2275 or go to our store at discogs.com backslash seller backslash golden spins backslash profile we can find whatever you may need we proudly accept paypal and every major credit card welcome back this is multimedia mafia we are talking about mind fuckery the films that made us go what oh i don't understand this and um yeah, all the things that, you know, you try to figure out. You sit there and watch it seven or eight times like, oh, 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 mm. okay, whatever. There's a lot of them out there. Tonight we've talked about Us. We've talked about the Terminator franchise and how it's a paradox. We've talked about um, whatever Isaiah started the show with. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. what Split. Movie. Split. Uh, Split, Us, and a Terminator. So yep. these are mind fuck movies. So they when are. you watch them, you have to wear a condom. <laughs> you have to put it on your head You figure out which one I don't want to do this podcast anymore Hey man, I didn't come up with it I had hey to man, steal that line from Josh <laughs> Well, I got Shout out doubtfulness <laughs> Well, I got, a mo I got a mind fuck movie And this is truly a mind fuck Because the first time I watched I went Hey! Right at the end of the movie So put it in my no, ear Not Interstellar But it's by the same director, Amanda Nicole <laughs> It's by Christopher Nolan, Amanda. Uh, Who what could it be, Amanda? Shutter Island. That's not by Christopher <laughs> Nolan, you dumb bitch. No. no, it is by Christopher Nolan, this movie. And this is the 2000 film Memento. Has anyone seen the movie Memento? 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 And if anyone says it's the Fresh Maker... The guy I'm gonna, Pierce? I'm going to stick my foot up your ass. That's Memento? Mentos. Memento. Memento. I just said with Guy Pierce. Correct, with Guy Pierce. Have you ever seen it? No. Okay. Well, Leonard was this in the movie theaters? tracking down the man yes. who raped and murdered his 2001, wife. 2001, bro. I was 11. The difficulty, however, of locating his wife's killer. You know, is I wasn't allowed in those rated R movies. By the fact that he suffers from a rare, untreatable form of memory loss. Here's what's great about this film. You're watching two movies at the same oh, time. Carrie Ann Moss is so... I know her. Yeah, I don't have that type of attention span. This is one of those movies where every other scene is connected. Fam, I had a hard time watching Ninja Turtles. I couldn't figure out which one was what. Oh, Joe no. Pantoliano's yeah. in it. How I was do you calling have... Splinter Shredder. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Look at the cast that they have. Half of these people look like they're in comedies. No, none of them are in comedies, though. Joe Pantaleon. I mean, Joey Pants has done comedy, yes. But Guy Pierce is a great actor. Mark Boone Jr.? Yeah, he plays Bert. 
Guy Pierce. He sounds familiar. Guy Pierce was the bad guy from Iron Man 3. He played the Mandarin. Not the fake Mandarin, the real Mandarin. He's been the guy a, from what? What you said? Iron Man 3. Thomas Iron Man Lennon 3? looks like a pedophile. Sorry. Okay. Well, Thomas Lennon's a great actor, but okay, here's Mark the thing. Mark Boone Jr. looks like he skins alligators. <laughs> he no played cat. in Sons of Anarchy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you get it from. This he's playing alligators. He skins alligators and eats squirrels. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm saying you need to shut the fuck up. That cut my G, it needs to go. All right. So Memento is a film where... Every other scene is connected. And here's what I mean by that. Scene one. Is it one of those movies you got to put together yourself? Yes. That's the whole point of a mind fuck. Like Inception? Kind of. Think like this. Scenes. puzzles. The odd number scenes. One, three, five, seven. On and on. Nine, eleven, whatever. All those scenes are one story. Right. And all the even number scenes. Two, four, six, eight. They're a different story. Does it say like is it numbered for you? No, it's not. But here it is. Here's the here's here's how you could tell the difference. The fir- the odd number scenes are in color and the uh, even scenes are in black and white. And at the end oh, of the okay. story Do they forewarn you and let you know that? Well, the whole thing is like every is like you're watching the movie and it goes color, black and white, color, black and white, color, black and white. That and would tr- annoy me. And you're trying to figure out why there's a color difference and why don't so the start scenes start slapping my TV as if I thought something was wrong with it. Why don't yeah. these scenes make sense? Because they're not telling like one and two aren't like they're not making but sense are they right different after actors or no, the no, same, same actors. actors. Yeah, what right. happens is by the time you're done with the movie you come to the last scene and you realize that's the true center of the movie. The color scenes are the things happening in sequential order. One, three, five, seven. And then you get to the ending and then you got to go back and watch all the black and white scenes because that's telling the second half of the movie. But it's cut in half and folded Uh, over. (sighs) What's the problem, Izzy? The problem is... If you're at the movie theater, you can't <laughs> rewind and watch the scenes at the beginning of the movie. The film is presented as two different sequences of scenes interspersed throughout the film. A series of black and whites that's shown chrono- uh, chronologically and a series of colors shown in reverse order. And the two sequences meet at the end of the film, thus completing one cohesive narrative. It's like you take a piece of paper and you fold it over. I feel bad for whoever went on a date to go see that movie. Can you imagine taking like a shoddy, <laughs> like somebody you wanted to have really bad? Like uh, you said, a shoddy, a like, shoddy, like no, that's like, like a sort like, off. No, like a girl. They don't let those in the movie theaters anymore. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you take a girl that you wanted so long, and then she finally agrees to the date. So you take her to go see what was that? Memento. Memento. So you take her to see that. And at the end, you think you about to get some cheeks, so you like, I. Right. But she's so confused from the fucking movie that she doesn't know what's going on. So she looks in the corner of the room, and you're there butt ass naked, like, <laughs> you ready for this? She's like, No, the, the, I'm so confused. I don't know what's going that come on. In this man's head. Play it. Play it. That's why you gotta do it the right way. That's why you go date, uh, dinner. I'm sorry, movie then dinner, so you have something to talk about at the dinner. That's so old school. Ain't nobody doing that now. And then you clap them cheeks. Everybody. Hulu and shit now. <laughs> Netflix. Nobody Netflix knows about that. Show? But that's so weird. You had to watch. So the way I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong. Go ahead. You watch all. Well, you really pay attention to all the color scenes first. And then. Rewind. You go back and watch. The Please movie continues in the black and white scenes. You don't have to. But all of a sudden, all the black and white scenes make sense. And then you're sitting there going, oh, right, okay, now I see what they did there. And now you're like, shit. So the movie, you're watching it but forward. do you remember those scenes yes. at, the, at the end of the movie? Yes. Okay. I you highly do. doubt it, but okay. It's one of those It's one of those things where you do. Shout out short-term memory. <laughs> so you don't want Netflix and chill? You know, you want Disney Plus and Smashing Puss? <laughs> oh, my God. I like that one. <laughs> that one was nice. Uh, I love that shit. <laughs> there was another one that had to do with like well, this one was like Disney goofy. Plus, Disney Plus and Thrust. Oh you want a Disney Plus and Huyok? <laughs> 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 okay, so that's Memento, and it, and it tells the whole story 
and it's 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 not that long of a film. It's a hundred it's 113 minutes, so it's just shy of two hours. And the whole thing, every scene starts out with him waking up and he writes on his body. So as the story's because he has memory. Right. And at the beginning of the story, he's got all of these notes on his body, but then in all the black and white scenes, he doesn't, and he's adding those notes to his body. So you're finding out why he's like at the beginning of the film, why he has these notes or like how he's getting all these notes and they're all reminders. So he'll wake up one morning. He's like, what the fuck's going on? Who am I? And then Feed the cat. Yeah. It's like he'll look down on his thigh. It's like, you know, uh, the, the, the diner on East 32nd. And he's like, what the fuck does that mean? And he has to go figure it out. But he put that there to remind himself from an earlier time to go check that out. So he doesn't forget it. Right. I don't understand why he just couldn't like, Keep a notebook with him. Yeah. So how was he writing on his style? With like uh, Sharpie? Yeah, with a Sharpie. Yeah. Hey, uh, imagine he took a shower before he went to sleep. I know. He's like, he never looked at his style. He just one day said, yo, I stank. And just hop in the shower. Everything is clean. And then he starts like a new life. And yeah, well. Because that could easily happen. Like It won every award under the fucking sun except except for the Academy Award. It was nominated twice for Best Original Screenplay and Best Film Editing. I uh, didn't win it, but it won AFI awards. It won oh, Sundance. Oh, so people liked this. Oh, it's a great film. I've never heard people of it. People liked it. I it thought is this a was a. It just sounds film. like a flop. No, it's not. Like it is a fantastic. If you like Christopher Nolan, and Chris Nolan has done. I mean, he did the Batman Begins trilogy, right? We all know that. That was mm-hmm. fantastic. He did Insomnia. He did uh, The Prestige, Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk. The, I didn't see Tenet yet, but I heard it was very good. You have all these movies that he did. And everyone loves it. Right. Loves it. And and it started out with, we did a movie in 98 called Following. But then he does Memento, and then he does Insomnia, which is another great film that stars Al Pacino, Hillary Swank, Robin Williams, and and it's about these two uh, police detectives trying to figure out a murder in Alaska. Eek. And that's not like your typical Robin Williams. I'm the genie of the lamp. Everyone's happy and shit. Yeah, that's like it's a hardcore kind of like thriller. Okay, and it's actually a remake of a Norwegian film too. So my point is, it is it's one of those kind of movies where it's like wow, mm-hmm. holy shit. Um, That's surprising. That, yeah. So, Insomnia is a good film. But then, like, check out Memento. And mind you, Memento is based off of a short story written by Chris's brother, Jonathan Nolan. Nolan. It's called Memento Mori. Which so he plagiarized? No, it's his brother. He took his brother's idea and put it to the film. Did they agree to it? Yeah, of course they did. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a thing. It was the basis for the movie. Okay. And and the whole the memento mori is a Latin phrase that means remember that you will die. Right. Just a remember, just a reminder, your time is coming short. Remember, this all ends. Yes. That memento looks slapping. I know. She so just she, showed me a, a picture of a platter of, what is that, shrimp scampi? It's mac and cheese How and the shrimp. fuck does Sorry. that have anything to do with tonight's podcast? Because I'm- you fat bitch! I was looking for food. I don't know, but earlier, because I was I was minding her I business. Apologize. She was sending like this long ass text to somebody. I feel bad for whoever got that. <laughs> that was that shit was long and deep. Like <laughs> it wasn't actually bad. I was just I want to slam over my head into the fucking mic so bad right now. Bullshit. I didn't read anything, but I just seen like that big green ass bubble. <laughs> And I was like, yo, somebody's going to have to read that shit. No. For those of you keeping track, I just hit my head four times on the mic. Can we get back on track, please? <laughs> uh, she keeps showing me shrimp scampi. Oh, let's talk about one more film and then we'll wrap it I'll up. I'll send shall you the, the profile. Oh, yeah. Actually, let's go to a quick break. We'll go to one more break and then we'll come back. Let's do that. Oh, Eric, look. We are by the water finally. Ah, water. You know what you can put water in? You know what water goes great in? What? My Is This Real Coffee mug that you can get on www.greenarrowmedia.org. I'm not going to drink that. (laughs) And welcome back, Podcast World. You're listening to Multimedia Mafia. I'm the Don at the Desk, Anthony. And tonight we're talking about Mindfuck Movies with Amanda and Izzy in the booth. The Keith V. Keola Sun uh, Studios, by the way, right here in Patterson, New Jersey. So 
We're talking about mind fucks, and you cannot finish a podcast without talking about the mother of all mind fucks. One of the best. We break out a break a rule here. We're talking Fight Club. Now, please tell me, you two numbskulls, you've seen Fight Club. Yes, I have, and I actually when did it, when did it come out? Nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. That's when I watched. That's it. when Teresa I was, a was year born. Old. So I have glimpses. It's actually of a mind fuck movie, right? Isn't that like his thoughts in his head? He's fighting himself. He's fighting himself. Brad Pitt, right? He was in. It? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Brad Pitt was never a person. Uh, correct. I always forget that you're ten years younger than me, so you yeah. and I haven't like seen. You everything. would never think he is. Yeah. But. So you think <laughs> yeah, you the don't. movies that like you watch over and over? I don't have no idea what the fuck you're talking. No, about. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's good because then you can ask me questions and I can educate your young ass. So Fight Club. But I know Brad Pitt was imaginary and mm-hmm. he was like like a savage part of himself or something like that. Essentially, yeah. But the way the movie's done is you don't realize that that is not exactly part of there's no name for edward norton's character he's just the narrator right and everything about this movie and i mean chuck palonic who wrote it he's a great author i have several of his books everything about chuck palonic is just extra for no reason Mm -hmm. like the narrator feels like his life is over like right. there's nothing. He has a shitty like he works in a call center like Amanda and Teresa. I don't he's, work in a call center anymore, but thank you. He's unfulfilled. She upgraded. He's unfulfilled. And he just fills his life with meaningless shit. And he, to make himself feel something, he goes to support groups. P- like people like ca- people who are suffering from cancer or people who have AIDS and he sits there and he lies to these people saying, "Oh yeah, I'm suffering just like you" in order to feel emotion from them. Yeah, that's kind of And he meets this man on a plane. Mm-hmm. Who's Brad Pitt and his name's Tyler Durden And he just Ops this motherfucker's life And he meets this one One of the women he meets in support groups Is a woman Named uh, Mara no, M- Marla Marla, And They start like Tyler and Marla Start a relationship but of course every time Tyler's doing anything for real it's actually the narrator and the narrator doesn't remember it or he blacks out or whatever and they begin to fight people and they start what they call a fight club where it's just guys come down here get in the ring beat the shit out of each other right and then just to get aggression out but then it turns into like this movement where we have to take down like corporations and society and everyone like let's blow up like a bank to sh- because they're shitting on people with the, they're foreclosing homes. And oh, yeah, yeah. Let's wipe out to some- like relieve debt or some shit. Exactly. Like if, the, if there was a real fight club, the biggest target would be like Navient and Sally Mae to wipe out student debt. Seriously, I think everybody should take them on. Sorry. <laughs> Let's yeah, know. We're not blowing yeah. up buildings on fucking multimedia mafia. Hey, man, I got ten thousand dollars in fucking debt. You tell me different. We're going <laughs> to blow that shit up. No, we don't. We don't support terrorism. No, we do not. But the, but the whole movie, it, it, the whole movie, you watch it and you don't you don't realize that Tyler Durden is the narrator until the very end. And, and once it's only when he shoots himself in the head, then then Tyler Durden disappears. Well, he shoots himself in the mouth. It goes through his cheek. He does. You know, but that's when Tyler disappears. And it's, that's the moment where he's finally taking control of his life. Mm. Now, here's one of the best things. I love about Fight Club, okay? They had to change- There's a- one rule. Well, go on. Tell us that, Amanda. You don't, you talk, don't about- talk about Fight Club. You don't. And why don't you? That's where you completely lost me. You just don't talk about it. Because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. No, it probably does. Not. <laughs> In his head, it exists. You don't talk about Fight Club because- you don't want it. You don't talk about Fight Club because obviously people are going to talk about it and then you get more people here. So if you tell someone don't talk about it, but if gonna, it's in his head, but 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 other people are showing up. Like he starts small. So if I'm fighting myself in my head, he wasn't fighting himself. No, he was, he was fighting actually fight, fighting. He's fighting in his head. Like he's he's living. No, he no, was no, no. fighting someone else in real life. He was Punching fighting in real life, but the person Brad Pitt wasn't actually 
Real. dare it was in his head. Correct. Like he met this person in his head. Right. And then he said, yo, I've st-, and he started meeting people at these support groups. He's like, I've, I've started the Fight Club. But when they're in the Fight Club, his first rule about Fight Club is you don't mention Fight Club. You don't talk about Fight Club. Obviously, people are going to talk. It's fucking me. Obviously, people are going to talk, and mm-hmm. that means more people are going to come. So you say, don't talk about it. You're going to get more people to show up, and then you're going to build a cult eventually. Right. But here's what I love about this movie. And this is a true, st- this is a true thing. I'll read it right here. This is from, this is the story. It's written by, I mean, it's just paraphrased by this guy on Reddit, Changeling Vanguard. This is from seven years ago, but this is the story. The original pillow talking scene had Marla saying, I want to have your abortion. Now, in the book, she says it too, because I've read the book. They get, they're having sex, they get done, she rolls over, she says, I want to have your abortion, which is fucked to say. What? I want to have your abortion. That is so weird. So she However, planned on getting pregnant. Just to have his abortion. Telling him about it and then aborting it. Correct. I want to have your abortion. That's, so she's foreseeing this. That's, and she's into it. Yeah, that's like sexy time to her. Like they're cuddling. She's like, I just want to have your abortion. <sighs> this Fucked is up dark. Shit. Yes, it's dark already. But this line in the original novel, Fox Pictures was like, no, 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 no. We, you can't have that. Absolutely not. So David Fincher said, fine, I'll change it. And we'll cut that line under one condition. Whatever we put in its place, you cannot cut. You have to accept it. Mm -hmm. So the head of the studio, Laura Zinskin, said, fine. Whatever you write, it cannot possibly be worse than I want to have your abortion. So you want to know what they put in its place? She rolls over and looks at him and says, I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. (laughs) (laughs) Now... Zinskin. Oh my god. Zinskin, the head of the studios, was so appalled by that line. She said, put the original line back. I want to have your abortion. And David Fincher said, fuck you. No. I'm sticking to my agreement. And he refused. And that's why that line was in the wow. movie. Now Helen and Bottom Carter thought high school because she didn't know that in schools in America, um, you know, some, you know, you wear, what do you call it? Like, you know, grade school out, like a little girl outfit. Uh, Helen Bonkar assumed that it meant high school because she was unfamiliar with American school terms and was amused by the line because she thought it was funny. But when she learned that grade school in America meant middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, she was disgusting by it. She's disgusted by yeah. it. So there you go. Yeah, grade school over that, here is middle school. Yes, that's my favorite line. Mm. And that's my favorite story about Fight Club. Um, you know, the movie's excellent. The cinematography is great. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's a movie you can watch four or five times and be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? You, you catch something different every single time you watch this movie. And if you love Fight Club, please go check out Chuck Palahniuk. Chuck Palahniuk has done some great stuff. Uh, Chuck Palahniuk wrote a, uh, I mean, he's a huge, he's a huge writer. Um, three books that come to mind off the top of my head are, are um, Haunted, which is a fantastic um, series of stories. Mm. Um, there's another one. It's like the, it's like the, what's the, the Breakfast Club in Hell. Hmm? Yes, it's called Damned. It's like this ragtag group of like, teenagers wake up in hell and they're walking across hell to talk to the devil and be like why are we here and they're all just saying like oh yeah this is why i went this is what i did while i was alive this is what i did when i was alive and it's 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 just like the fucking breakfast club it's fantastic yeah, but my book. favorite book is a book called snuff it came out in 2008 and here's the thing i'll just read you the book description cassie wright porn priestess it says Intends to cap her legendary career by breaking the world record for sexual fornication on camera with 600 men. Oh, now, the God. record is actually over 900, but that's besides the point. Mm-hmm. That was Lisa for Sparks. For like 13 hours, right? Yeah, that was Ugh. Lisa Sparks. But at the time this was written, this Cassie Wright, legendary porn star, wants to have sex with 600 men, get the world record. And there are three people in the book mm-hmm. that... Each person is telling their own perspective on Mr. 600, Mr. 72, Mr. 137. And then there's a fourth one, Sheila, which is her personal assistant. And every one of these people have a connection to Cassie Wright. And all of the three men are going to have sex with her. And then you have her assistant 
who's like like keeping track of everything and putting her two cents in right. and i forget the exact like thing for each guy mm -hmm. but i know one of them is another famous porn star who's like like i started my career with her i'm gonna end my career with her right. and then there's one who's like she might be my mom and i just want right. to meet her because i was adopted and i think she's my mother mm -hmm. i'm like but just like the whole time you're reading like is he gonna have sex with her because he's in line you know what i mean and right. i forget what the third one is um it's it's just it's 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 like a little murder mystery too in there because she plans on killing herself after it's all over. Right. It's a very good book. It's short too. It's only like two hundred pages. So if you like Chuck Palahniuk and you like Mind Fucks, check him out. And if you're a fan of Fight Club, they also did two sequels to Fight Club, two and three, but they're both comic books. Right. I have uh, I read the second one. I have not gotten to the third one yet, but check them out too because why not? Yeah. You know what I just thought about? What? Um. Um, Black Ops, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, that storyline was a mindfuck. Right, with Reznov and Mason? Right, where Reznov, where they escaped from Verkuta, right? Yes, Verrucked. Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. I think it was Verkuta. Something like that, yeah. Or, wait, Verrucked was the zombies map, so that, yeah, that's wrong. Verkuta. So they escaped from Verkuta, and where. Reznov left Mason on the train and he just said, yo, go get your freedom. That's where Reznov died or captured, right. whatever it is. So you go through the rest of the storyline where like a couple missions or the next mission, Mason meets Reznov again and be like, holy shit, like, mm -hmm. how did you leave? He's like, don't worry about it, you know, whatever it is. And, but during the storyline, you have to remember that Mason is being interrogated. So these are flashbacks that right. you're playing from Mason. So, and then at the end of the game, it comes out that this guy, um, I know right. Hudson and somebody else was interrogating him. Um, I thought they got the other guy. Mason and, uh, no, it was Hudson and somebody else. But Hudson ends up telling him that um Reznov was never there. Right. After the prison that Reznov was all to do with the numbers and his false memories. Yeah. So he was like, look, Reznov was Reznov died back Years in Verkuta. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yep. Like I'll give you that one fucked me and I was yeah. what, twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you another one. The same same thing is Dead Space. The whole point of Dead Space is Isaac is an engineer who's going to sit, figure out why like this ship has broken down in space. Yeah. And while he's there, he figures that something has infiltrated, killed everyone. Mm -hmm. And he keeps seeing his girlfriend. He's chasing her. Right. And at the end, you find out she's been dead the whole time. And when you're on board the Ishimura, it fucks with you. And you see things that aren't really there. Which, by the way, they just announced the remake. Like They yeah. dropped the trailer the other day. I'm stupid excited. I love that game. Dead Space was the first one was the best one for me. Totally. I played that space. I probably had to do that fucking that first one probably like twice. I played that game and it creeped me the fuck out. I think that was like the only game that actually scared me like as a child with all the jump scares and the storyline and the mm -hmm. I don't even know what to call those things. The creatures he was fighting. They were like aliens or something. Right? Necromorphs. But they were like something took over the ship and it was like aliens. Or yeah, something? well, there's the you have the black marker and the red marker thing, and there's a yeah. sequence or a frequency that goes out. And mm -hmm. but you do realize that the mission, every mission, every single mission has a title to it. If you put the first letter of each mission title together, it says the girl is dead. Oh, really? Yes, it's a little Easter egg. It was it was right there the whole time. Yeah, but fantastic. That, one, that that game was really good. I played it a few times. The first one, it. at least. The second one was good too. I got all the achievements for the first one and the second one, except for the permadeath one for Dead Space Two, and and you got to do it on in the insane mode, and I hate that that shit because yeah. it's like if you die, you have to start the game all over again. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, fuck this. Yeah, that's so fucked. I didn't get that achievement, and Dead Space Three took a shit on everything. And Dead so. Space was one of those games where if you got stuck, like at a save mm -hmm. like at a checkpoint you have low health mm -hmm. and you just have no option but to save the game there and then you go and then the next scene is like a fighting scene and you have no health you're fucked yeah it's like you're just this endless cycle of death and then you have no point but to just start the that's game all the over best no you don't start the game that's the best kind of game you just keep going until you figure it the fuck out i mean 
when you're on that little red yeah. blinking thing. <laughs> like, Dude, many times I fucking did that. Oh my god, yeah. I got one hit. I got one hit and I'm dead. I'm like, like it got to the point where that. you know exactly how many hits you could take, how many Correct. bullets you have, which gun you're gonna use at what point. That shit was crazy. That was that's that strategy right there. I know I gotta walk through these doors. Six necromorphs are coming off. I gotta figure out where they're coming from. I gotta from. kill this one first. Exactly. I gotta whip out this gun. <laughs> Pivot. Kill both of them. I got two shots. Maybe if I can aim right, I get double headshot. Right, right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you for joining us tonight on our episode, our season finale of Multimedia Mafia about movies. And this was a good episode, I felt. We talked about a lot of fun movies that I hope you guys go check out. And I also hope you check out our website, www.greenarrowmedia.org. We're going to be updating our calendar soon. And uh, check us out there. And when you're there, check out our sister podcast, Is This Real?, which talks about conspiracies and aliens. And they have a season coming up next week, starting next week, all about government conspiracies. So if you're a fan of government conspiracies, get out your tinfoil hats and put on Is This Real? because you're going to like it. We are, uh, are going to take a break from Multimedia Mafia for one week, just one. So there's no new episode dropping next week. This week, today's the 27th of July, 25th of July. You'll get an episode. This episode will be up on the 28th. And then there'll be no episode on August 4th. But the following week, August 11th, will be our first episode in our season two, our season talking all about music. So definitely, definitely check us out when that episode drops on August 4th. Um, if you want to support us in any way, shape, or form, check out our YouTube page. Check out our website. Like I said, we have an Etsy store. We're selling hats and all sorts of fun shit. Go check that out. And I'm sorry, our, my producer's whispering in my ear. What was that, sir? What? 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 Why? Why did the next episode drop over? This is dropping the 28th. And then we record on the 1st, so no episode on the 4th. Oh, I see what you're talking about. August 11th, that's when the episode's dropping. All right, no episode on the 4th, episode on the 11th. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. I was confuzzled. All right, everybody out there in podcast world, check us out. Check out our sister podcast. Check out the stuff you want to buy. Keep it real. Keep it here on Multimedia Mafia. If you're thinking about checking out another web, another podcast about movies, fucking forget about it. I'll see you next time. <laughs>